I hope you don't get the sickness. Kurt is a stay-at-home dad Watching Disney movies he never had His daughter digs through all the VHS Crushing the classics in a princess dress Informed like Scuttle, Kurt's got your ticket Making it real like Jiminy Cricket Most are off the Captain Hook, but if the Tweedledum He'll be taking more shots than Bambi's mom Leave some rays like Simba or crack like the beast dishes He'll show you a whole new world You won't need three wishes Stay-at-home Disney dad to die on that hill the Disney sequels have a bad rap. Yeah, Lion King 1.5 is an absolute garbage fire train wreck, so I'm a little nervous about Lion King 2. I'm nervous it's going to weaken my proclamation, but hey, let's return to Pride Rock and hold our babies high. The VHS starts with an ad for a new Disney World theme park. They list Magic Kingdom, Epcot, and MGM Studios. What is that? And now Circle of Life intro, and yup, Animal Kingdom coming soon. There's a dragon. So many questions. Where's there a dragon in Animal Kingdom? What the heck is MGM Studios? Ad for Mighty Joe Young. Haven't thought about that movie in two decades. What's up next? Ad for the rescuers. They put a penny in a bucket and lower her in a hole. They lower her into a hole. They put a child in a bucket and they lower her no. into a hole in the ground. Ad for Castle in the Sky. I talked about this in another review. They use the most iconic WWF mid 90s like music bed ever. You'd recognize it in a second. If it's life like were fair, then this legend would be lauded in his pursuit. Here we go. Feature presentation Lion King 2. I'm not going to hate it. I'm not going to do it. If you want to watch someone tear this movie apart, go somewhere else. Before we even start, I'm going to take a deep breath and accept that this will never measure up to the original Lion King and let's not expect it to. We have a decent opening song. It starts like the last one began and ended. I guess Rafiki raises Simba and Nala's cub above Pride Rock and all the animals pay their respects. Pumbaa and Timon are excited to raise a little boy cub. It's Swerve, it's a girl, and everyone faints. Because it's a girl, and they're expecting a boy. Not going to hate on this movie. Not going not gonna to hate on it. Kiera is the daughter, and guess what? Simba has been beaten into adulthood, so like every other Disney character, when they grow up, Simba is now lame. The flicker is gone from Simba's eyes. Simba is a dad, and not fun at all, and he ruins Kiera's thirst for adventure. He has no recollection of the fun he used to have as a cub. Again, this is what happens in every Disney sequel ever made. The main characters grow up. They become adults with adult problems. They never have fun again, and you know what? That's actually what happens in real life, too. Okay. Lion King 2, let's keep this ball going. Keep this, yeah, is that the, Kiera sees the Badlands and is curious. I guess they redid the elephant graveyard into the Badlands. Pumbaa sounds like someone trying to do Pumbaa, if that makes sense. Kiera wants someone to listen to her. Timon says, sorry, he wasn't listening, and calls her a princess. Okay, if she's a princess, where is this character's representation in the Disney universe? She's a princess. They call Grubs the other white meat. Less filling, tastes great. Not gonna hate this movie, not gonna hate on it, not gonna do it, not gonna go down that path. Kira rolls down a cliff and runs into another baby cub. He's an outsider, and suddenly a crocodile attacks. There's decent background music playing. They escape only to land in the actual crocodile den. The animation is great. Like, honestly, it's not far off from Lion King 1. This sequel probably had a bigger budget than most sequels do. They bond over almost dying, as you do. He says his name is Kovo, and a ruh -roh. from the bushes, it's not Scar. Scar's wife, Zira, jumps up, but Simba's there, and they're in each other's face. They tell her to get out, and she claims the Pride Lands actually belong to Scar, and technically, she's right. She claims Kovu is the proper future leader of the Pride Lands, and again, she's not wrong, going by Lion King 1. We have another cut and paste scene where Simba scolds Kira and explains how he worries about her and tells her about the circle of life. Simba sings a song, and it's not so catchy. See, not gonna hate on this movie. It's a duet, Kira sings along, and now, you know, it's not horrible. Like, they're trying. Again, I keep slipping back into remembering Lion King 1. I'm comparing it, and I gotta stop, because that's not fair. We meet a bumbling, flea-ridden, exiled lion. He's Kovu's older brother. He feels like he should be the leader. He stomps around complaining that Scar isn't even Kovu's real father. He's a little kiss-ass, and his mother ignores him. Kovu gets berated by his mom, and he's like a sympathetic character now. 
Then suddenly she has an idea. Kovu is going to infiltrate Simba's family. And this begins the Disney sequel storyline about how a bad guy becomes a double agent, infiltrates the protagonist, Cap actually turns him or herself around, becoming a legitimate good guy or girl. But then the rest of the bad guys execute the original plan. And even though he or she is reformed, they still look like they were following the original plan and stab the good guys in the back when really... While that was the original plan, yes, they didn't want to do it anymore now that they're good guys or bad girls and they didn't have the time to call off their original bad family and the good guys feel betrayed and turn their backs on the him or her that are the new good guy that were the original bad guy and the bad guys congratulate them on a job well done and now they're stuck back with the bad team even though they're the good people and they roll into the third act. Okay, Scar's wife sings a song. It's no be prepared. It's fine. Not gonna complain. Rafiki's back doing that iconic wall art and I love how thousands of fans have got that image as a tattoo. That is a sweet tattoo. Rafiki gets a premonition that Kovu and Kira are gonna be an item and he accuses Mufasa of having his head in the clouds. I'm gonna let that slide. Kovu is being brainwashed. He's going to kill Simba. Close up of his intense face. That was a good scene. It's like, there's some good stuff in here. Back at Pride Rock here is being tested. Uh, going to comment again that the animation is pretty solid in the sequel. It doesn't look like the standard straight to video animation style we're used to. Scar's sniveling. Sun is complaining like usual. They talk about the hunt and that just that word puts me in a good childhood place. While Kiera is on her hunting challenge, Scar's kids run through the fields with torches in their mouths, lighting everything on fire. Simba sees the fire and runs to Kiera, but she is trapped inside the circle of flames. Kiera ends up hanging from a cliff like Mufasa, Simba, Simba and to a lesser extent Scar, but she pulls herself up. See, the girl does it. She pulls herself up without help but then collapses kovu saves her life and bam the plan is working simba and kovu snarl at each other this is pretty good rafiki shows up and states that kovu saved his daughter bam kovu asks if he's going to be blamed for a crime he didn't commit louder bam eat it simba how does that feel huh in your face kovu comes back with them to pride rock and the flirting continues see even in the lion verse the gals just love a bad boy simba has nightmares about scar who turns into kovu in his dreams He's Mufasa and he's falling from a cliff into a stampede as Kovu stands above him laughing. Kovu finds a peeping Timon and almost eats him. Please do. He and Pumbaa are not adding anything to this movie at all. Great animation though. It's night. Everyone is under the stars. Simba asks the stars for guidance. They are obviously calling back to the scene in the first one, but it didn't seem forced. Big thumbs up. Rafiki shows up and gets Kira and Kovu to follow him and we get the new Can You Feel the Love Tonight song. Eh. Rafiki sings them a romantic song. Eh, no, he doesn't. Quote, there's a crazy place that the monkeys sing. Why is Rafiki singing? This is dipping into kiss the girl territory. Rafiki is like that awesome uncle that immediately picks up on the vibe and starts talking you up in front of the lady you like. Sure, one Rafiki song later and they are in love. See, it works. They say goodnight and Kovu starts heading home, but Simba invites him to stay with them in Pride Rock. Oh no, they let their guard down. Kovu takes Simba for a walk and it's on. Zira and her family of exiled lions surround them. Kovu is applauded and Simba's like, you traitor, and they attack. Simba is gonna die. The music is like a lion version of the Pirates of the Caribbean score. Simba is left hanging from the rock. Enough of the hanging from the rock moments. The sniveling lion runs up for the kill, but the bumbler bumbles it. Simba gets away. The the idiot brother gets the dramatic death scene. Okay, am I supposed to feel sad? This character hasn't displayed a single redeeming quality this entire movie. Like, good, I'm glad he's dead. Simba limps home and says, Kovu set him up. Zira backhands Kovu back at their cap. She knows what's up. I did nothing. Exactly. You betrayed your pride. You betrayed Scar. Nuka is dead because of you. His name was Nuka. You know, this is, this is getting good. They are primed and ready to take the kingdom by force now. Kovu shows back up at Pride Rock because of the slap. He now has a scar in his face as well. Awesome. The animals all sing about deception and disgrace. The good guys are throwing rocks at them. Wow, you know, this movie is really picking up. Again, wipe away expectations of, of it being Lion King 1, and this is not a bad little movie at all. Dejected, Kovu looks at his reflection in the water, and we see Scar. That was cool. Kira is really sad, but again, even animated girl lions like the bad boys, and this is making Kovu even more appealing to her. For the record, this movie is basically Lion, Romeo, and Juliet. If you are familiar with the plot of Romeo and Juliet, allow me to pop in the 1984 motivational VHS tape called Mr. T's Be Somebody or Be Somebody's Fool. Within this video, Mr. T explains the plot of Romeo and Juliet in the most convoluted way possible. The segment goes like this. Mr. T is teaching a class. The students ask Mr. T if he was ever in a gang and he says no because his mama didn't raise no bad boy. But it does remind him of a story. Now, I'll start directly quoting Mr. T in the tape. Quote, it reminds me of a story about Jackie and Ricky. A kid asks, who? Mr. T says, well, I'll start at the beginning. Many years ago, well, not that many years ago, there was a young man named Ricky, and he liked this young woman named Jackie, 
I guess they lived on two different parts of town. Ricky lived on the south side of town, and Jackie lived on the, the north side of town. No, no, where Ricky lived, there was a street gang called the Mighty Midgets, and where Jackie lived, there was a street gang called the Crazy Cats, and they always used to fight. They wanted to be the top gang in the city. They used to fight all the time. Anyway, one night there was a big dance, and Ricky went to the dance, and he got in a big fight with one of the gang members of the Crazy Kids. And uh, that's the side of town where Jackie lived, and therefore when Jackie's mother learned that she was really sure that Ricky was part of the gang, and Jackie tried to explain to her mother that Ricky was no gang member, but uh, uh, and at this point Mr. T really goes for it, like he is setting himself up for an Academy Award here. He wants to continue, he wants to finish but this, with the story, but he's just so conflicted, uh, 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 and the children ask, what, what? And T continues to just silence the skeptics with his action, goes, uh, I don't remember, I'm afraid I'll get the the story wrong the children protest and big T to continue and finally he breaks ah uh, ah uh, you gotta go read the ending yourself and one kid asks reading didn't you make this up which is really funny because T was telling this as if it was true wasn't he but the kid apparently knew it was BS from the start anyway Mr. T says well I, I halfway made it up and half of it is true no sir Romeo and Juliet is not a true story but let's continue T says uh well the real story is called Romeo and Juliet, and it was written by this English guy named Wilm Shakespeare. Yes, Wilm Shakespeare. A kid tries to shut down T and asks, That English dude? I thought he only wrote old-time stories. Then Mr. T looks really sad and says, No, little brother. He wrote a lot of good stuff. And that delivery is so weird. It's like T himself was recently scolded for dissing Shakespeare and had a dark, like, clockwork orange re-education about the subject. The segment wraps up with Mr. T delivering a big sermon about going to the library and how books could take you to places you've never been, whatever. I cannot recommend this movie enough. Back to Lion King 2. Kira sings a song and it's a duet with Kuvo. Animation is great, song not so much. They roll around in the grass and their faces come together in the reflection of the water. I don't know what that means, but that was a neat moment. He wants to run away with her and they can start their own pride. She's not sold. The outcast lions are like, hey, yeah. I held off this long, come on. I'm just a man. The outcast lions are on the move. Time to take back Pride Rock. Simba rallies the troops and it's Lion Army standoff. This is tense. This is dark and raining and awesome. Scar's bride is going to take back the lands. She's dreamed about nothing else. Timon says she needs a hobby and just ruins this incredible moment. The fight begins. Scar's wife and Nala fight. This is epic. Timon threatens to make Pumbaa fart on some scraggly lions and they scream and run away. Quit ruining this movie, you two. The lovebirds step between the war and tries to calm everybody down. The bloodthirsty animals listen to the children and stop fighting. It's a truce. I mean, they have to get along anyways. The rain stopped, right? Zira tells them to attack, but no one does. Zira has lost all her army. She goes after Simba herself, but Kira interferes, and it's a countdown to someone hanging from a ledge. Three, two, one. Kira's hanging from a ledge. No, now Zira is hanging from the ledge. Kira offers her a paw. The dam has broken and the water floods below like the stampede of yesteryear. She refuses the paw and falls just like Scar into the water. Hey, Kovu, you're an orphan. Oh, great. Pumbaa and Timon sing us out. We get a weird, almost remix of Circle of Life. The wind picks up and all the animals stare off Pride Rock into the sun. And I think we hear Mufasa. Uh, you know, all right, it could have been better. I don't recognize a single name in the credits. The main storyline and characters were pretty good. Timon and Pumbaa ruined every scene they were in. They somehow managed to make Rafiki uncool. Much better than Lion King 1.5, but could have been better. That's what I think about. What do you think? What we have is a concern about Curtis Anderson. His interviewing style is not the best. His personal appearance is not the best. I was wondering if the man has some kind of a hold over the channel that uh, he's allowed to be employed for so long with the standards of journalism 